Hello and good morning, everybody. Hey, hi, Arrow. Is this Heather? It, this is Heather. How are you? Doing very well. Wow, what a blessing I get to speak with you right away. Usually it's with a producer saying, okay, Arrow, you've got 10 minutes and that's it. Okay, make sure you're out by such and such time. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Just me and I can talk your ear off. <laughs> your book is unbelievable. And the book is Girl with a Game Plan. And I mean, I mean, from bench warmer to superstar, you didn't read, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes and no. Uh, there's a lot of internal no's, and I discuss that in you know in the book of, of defending against that internal opponent that we all have. I always call it the beast. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is quite beastly, but good news, we can defend against it and uh, overcome, right? I, well, I totally agree because I'm a daily writer, and I find that strength in being honest with myself first because how I treat myself is how I will treat others. Absolutely, absolutely. What is your positive point? Where, where do you go to get your source of energy? I have really, in the last uh, three years, taken to just feeding and fueling my mind with as much positive uh, information on positive psychology and mm -hmm. how to really help ourselves through any adversity. So I, I listen to podcasts, I listen to books, I listen to YouTube videos, anything I can get my hands on, and I'm doing it all the time. So if I'm, you know, doing it, something as mundane as filling the dishwasher or folding wash, mm -hmm. you know, the daily to do is I'm constantly listening to something to fuel me instead of something to bring me down. Boy, I'm so in touch with everything that you just said, because one of the things that I do, I will hand wash my dishes in the kitchen because I think it's a form of being grat grateful and, be and, and being aware of, you know, how did all this take place? Well, it began over here. So let's return the toys to their toy box so that it'll be there for another day of cooking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's really what, you know, in, in the book, I kind of talk about having an off season um, in our lives. And that off season in the book is is that time to have awareness because in, in so many people are just so busy from their life to do list in addition to social media and mindless scrolling and it's just noise 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 and we don't listen to those quiet moments that we can have with ourselves you give people the opportunity to replenish their mind body and soul so many people you know they don't want to face the changes but until they hit that wall and they can't find anything else yeah absolutely it's you know it's it's a human condition and the more we realize that it's it's hard <laughs> life is not easy uh i think it will have a much easier time with it to, to give ourselves some grace and start with that awareness of not just our strengths our weaknesses and know that we can continually move forward it's not going to be easy but it'll always be worth it is self-doubt still one of our strongest uh worst conditions oh absolutely yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, I, I think, too, it's it's a it's a misconception when we see other others on social media, whether it be an influencer with a lot of followers or a movie star or, you know, a radio host like yourself, myself being a former Philadelphia Eagles cheerleader and gym owner and now author. You know, I struggle with self-doubt just as much, if not more so than the next person, because I am reaching and striving to really do things that put me outside of my comfort zone. So it's having a healthy relationship with knowing that I'm gonna have that doubt, but that doubt also now helps to fuel me to move forward and become stronger. It seems like we have more hats to, to wear and, and so many different things that, that are expected of us on a daily basis. How do you deal with all the multiple roles and what can you do to suggest to listeners to say, hey, look, play your role, but play it right. Yeah, I think it's I think sometimes it's trial and error. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I love wearing hats, you know, actual hats as well. <laughs> so, I think, so like right now I have a hat on, you know, I have winter hats, I have cowboy hats. So I think that it's 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 realizing that there are different hats, you know, in real life as well, going from I'm a mom, I'm also an entrepreneur now, I am, I train, you know, still physical fitness. So it's being able to trans transfer yourself into these different roles, knowing that um, you're you're going to have good days, you're gonna have bad days, and some days you're gonna be a great mother, while that day you might be a really poor fitness instructor, or vice versa, and there's, you know, you're just, sometimes you just need to take the dang hats off, yeah. and uh, Netflix on the couch too, and, and there's a time and place for timeouts in life as well.
Being a leader like this, it also comes with one of the biggest challenges, and that is facing those that didn't want you to change because they, they kind of like the old you, and they're going, well, what about what we used to do? No, I've got a new path. How did you have to deal with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something we all struggle with, whether it's, you know, with changing our diets or, you know, deciding to drive a different car. It's the people around us will get very... Um, Oh, gosh, they can be very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that it's not so much about me or it's not so much, much about the person making these new choices. It's more about the person feeling them they're judging themselves yeah. because they see us change and then they look at themselves and think, oh, wait, what am I doing with my life? And it kind of puts the lens back on them. So if we can realize that, you know, and, and typically it's the it's the people closest to us right it's the it might be the people you live with it might be your coworkers realize that they're not really out to get you it's just making them feel di discomfort because you might be in a new path because maybe they're thinking maybe I should be doing something else yep. or maybe they're not listening to those quiet whispers in their own hearts. See, that's why I, I always want to listen to a Debbie Downer, but I don't want to listen to them that long. And the reason being is because they don't like positive people and they'll tell you they don't like positive people and they want you to come down to their level. But it's like, OK, I'll listen to you for a second, but I got to go. I got to go because I, I don't want to be in the same hole. Yes, yes, I agree. I, I think there that, you know, you need, we all need to have our boundaries and it's great to be um, with, especially, you know, around holidays, it's, it's great to be around your family and friends, but you, you need to also be careful of where you allow your energy to flow and what, whose energy you allow to flow to you as well. The book we're talking about is Girl with a Game Plan. Would you say that that conversation in the mirror sometimes needs to be about confidence and, and telling ourselves it's not conceit, it's confidence, it's courage. Now take a chance. Let's go win. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in, in the book, I talk about the nine different roles that we need to play on a daily basis. And two of my favorite are, you know, being your own biggest fan. And I now have a foam finger that sits behind my desk to remind <laughs> me that, hey, you know what? I got to love myself first before I can love my kids, my husbands, my clients. Uh, and to, you know, actually take the time to do some daily gratitude statements. And I write them down and I... I give space in the book to do that as well. And then my, of course, other favorite role is being a cheerleader. And that's where you can go right into the mirror or turn on your camera on your phone and look at yourself and tell yourself how amazing you are, what you want to accomplish. And, you know, as a former cheerleader, you're on the sidelines expressing what you want the team to do mm -hmm. ahead of time, right? Score, team, score. So why not wake up every single day, look at yourself in the mirror and say, score team, or yeah. let's go win the day or come on let's, <laughs> let's get busy and win at life purpose and passion can be fire starters there are a lot of people that don't like people that have the passion and i wonder if it's jealousy or they feel like that because we put so much passion and love into it it's like okay that that's slowing down our purpose and productivity yeah you know what i i i believe that it is a lack of of self-love mm -hmm. and that truly is what the the heart and soul of my book is is for us all to really look at our own selves again through that awareness and believe be successful in what we feel is a success for our life so you know i talk about being a superstar no one can be a superstar in this unless they're coming from a place of love and it's not about you know seeing seeing your name in lights to be a superstar it's about shining your love your light your passions I am a firm believer in taking a transition walk every day. This forest here in South Charlotte, North Carolina gives me unbelievable energy. But how can we convince listeners to do the same? Yeah, walking is great. I have a German Shepherd um, that likes to take me for walks. And <laughs> it is, it's, you know, any kind of movement. And I talk about this too in the book. We have to be our own wellness trainers. So we have to get out there and start moving more. So if you don't live by a forest like you do, you might, you know, be able to walk around the, the, city that you live in you might be able to you know for me i live in you know an area with lots of shopping centers so i could park really far away from the store yep. to get a little extra movement into that shopping center so there's always ways to get out there fuel the body and you know 
taking action, whether it is taking action in walks, taking action with eating better, taking action in the direction of reaching your goals is going to build the strength. And I talk about finding that on-ramp to the eating. We live in a, in a culture that is very black and white. Yeah. So it's, you know, here's my before, here's my after. Well, most of us aren't living in um, the befores or the afters. We're, we're right in the middle of it, right? So how can we take that on ramp and say, you know what, today I'm going to make a goal for myself that is reachable yet a little bit si outside of my comfort zone. Maybe it's drinking three glasses of water because <laughs> you don't drink any glasses of water. And, right. you know, being in the wellness industry, that's actually my goal. I love coffee. So my goal right now is to get three glasses of water in in the day. So it's my on ramp <laughs> to being a little bit healthier. Where can people go to find out more about you? So you can go to heathergudesco.com and that's heather, G-I-D-U-S-K-O.com. And then my book is on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So yeah, let's get, let's take some action and let's start shining our, our lights bright. I love it. Please come back to the show anytime in the future, Heather. The door is always going to be open for you. Yes. Thank you so much. I am so blessed to have this opportunity to speak with you, Arrow. Well, you be brilliant today. Okay. All right. You too.